Um, so we're going to move on to talk a little bit about asynchronous learning, also known as individualized interactive instruction or um, distance learning. So this is something that I'm pretty passionate about. I actually um, kind of took our initial version of asynchronous learning for our residency program and moved it to another program. So I'm going to talk to you guys about a different, couple different types of learning management systems and then sort of some background on asynchronous learning. So we're going to start by discussing educational theory. So educational theory is super important. It's important to understand how your learners learn and why they learn the way they learn. And recently, some of the educational theories have started to suggest that we need to be placing more emphasis on the value of learning rather than just the exact content, uh, content and teaching our learners how to learn for themselves. And that's where distance learning or asynchronous learning is really beneficial. So a couple learning theories. Um, it's important to remember that our residents, for the most part, are going to be pretty problem-based, um, pretty problem-oriented. They're going to be pretty self-directed. They're there for a reason, and they want to learn specific things, OK? Um, it's important to remember that they're going to be ready to learn when they show up for conference. For the most part, they're ready to get going. They want to learn something. They want that time to be valuable for them. Um, it's also really important to realize that adults are a little bit like fish. We don't have super long attention spans. Our learners, for the most part, can really only pay attention for about 15 to 20 minutes before their minds are going to start to wander. And so that suggests that maybe formalized lectures the way we've previously been educating might not be the best way to keep our learners engaged. Um, additionally, we need to remember that our residents are pretty self-directed. You know, they, um, they can go home and they can study. They've been through you know, undergraduate, they've been through medical school, they have pretty good, um, pretty good learning techniques for themselves at home, and for the most part, they really are interested in learning. So this brings us up to distance learning. So distance learning is the mode of delivering education when your learners are not physically present in the classroom. So they may be at home sitting on their couch, they may be on an airplane, they may be, you know, listening to a podcast while they're driving. All of that are examples of distance learning. So recently, in emergency medicine, the ACGME has said that we can make 20% of our regular didactic time distance learning. So this is pretty awesome. It means that we can provide our learners with a way to educate themselves at home and to give them lifelong learning skills while still fulfilling our conference requirements for emergency medicine. Um, Distance learning also goes by a couple different names. You guys are probably going to hear this, asynchronous learning, individualized interactive instruction, and then additionally, um, uh, asynchronous learning, distance learning, individualized interactive instruction, also known as III. So there are a few key things that you need to make sure that your individualized interactive instruction, your distance learning, your asynchronous learning is meeting all of the ACGME requirements. And then also, you know, beneficial for your learners. And that includes making sure that you have good content and that your, oh, we're going backwards. That's my problem with this pointer, every single time. There you go. You need to make sure that your content is good content and you need to make sure that it's monitored by someone. So somebody should be checking out all of the content. You know, somebody should be making sure that it's good content, that it's high quality, and that it's appropriate at the appropriate level for your learners. You also need to make sure that you're evaluating your learners in some way, okay? So you're making sure that your learners are actually doing the content and they're actually learning something. And if they're not, you need to adjust it. So that means that you need to have it overseen by one of your educators, whether that is your program director, your APD, or faculty, you know, that's in your program. It should be overseen by someone. And then lastly, you need to make sure that it is monitored for efficacy, okay? Make sure that it's good, high quality, and that your learners are actually getting somewhere with it. So how do you implement an asynchronous learning curriculum, a distance learning curriculum, an III type curriculum? Well, there's a couple different ways. You're going to need some form of a learner responsible content, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, some form of an evaluation, and then a method to actually deliver it to your learners. All right? So we're going to start with, um, again, going the wrong way. All right, we're going to start with your learner responsible content. So learner responsible content is probably one of my favorite parts of distance learning. Um, this is what your learners are going to do at home. You know, we talked about this a little bit. At, 
you know, discussing TBLs, but this is what your learners are going to be sitting at home or on the airplane or whatnot, kind of reviewing on their own and learning. And what's exciting about learner responsible content is that it can be just about anything. So it can be book chapters, it can be journal articles, or my personal favorite is it can be stuff from the web from a trusted resource, okay? So this brings us into free open access medical education, which makes awesome learner responsible content. And part of the reason why I love free open access medical education resources for my learner responsible content is that it teaches our learners where to find additional information. During residency, we kind of spoon feed everything to them. You know, we tell them which book chapters to read, we tell them which journal articles to read, and then we tell them, you know, what to learn on shift. But once they graduate, they're not gonna have somebody spoon feeding them this education. And foam is a great way for them to continue to get their own education, which was part of the reason why I think it makes great um, learner responsible content. And foam can be anything from things like academic life and emergency medicine to life in the fast lane or podcasts also like EM rap. And all of those are great learner responsible content sources. One of the big things though that I always tell everybody with foam is if you're going to use it for your learners, if you're gonna give it to them and have them use it as part of their asynchronous learning curriculum, you should always really dig deep into it. You should make sure that you listen to it, that you read it, and that the content is exactly what you want your learners to be learning. So after our learner responsible content, the next thing is gonna be the evaluation method. So evaluation, pretty simple. This is something that we're all very used to. Um, and this can be anything from multiple choice questions to short answer questions or even discussions that you have during conference or maybe during um, journal club or on shift with your learners. So a little bit of an easier portion um, of the uh, implementing an asynchronous curriculum. And then lastly is how are you gonna get it to your learners? So what method are you going to use to give this to your learners? And that brings in learning management systems. Does anybody here use a learning management system for their program? All right, so one. <laughs> um, so learning management systems. I love learning management systems. A learning management system is an online program or an app on your computer or on your phone that kind of curates and organizes everything for you. The really good learning management systems also have built-in ways to evaluate your learners on what they're doing. And some of the really good ones have ways to have discussions with your learners or way for you to, ways for you to give immediate feedback to your learners as well. So I'm gonna talk about a couple different learning management systems, um, some of which I like more than others, and I've had personal experience with all of them, so I can kind of help you guys troubleshoot if you have any questions. Um, the first one I bring up is iTunes U. So iTunes U is really great because it's super easy to use. It's very easy on the instructor end and it's very easy on the learner end. The one of the bummers about um, iTunes U is that it's really only good for curating your materials, for putting everything up there and for housing um, articles or housing podcasts and that sort of stuff. It really doesn't have a way to do evaluation within the program which means that if you're going to use this as part of your 20% of your didactic curriculum, that you need to have a different way to evaluate your learners. So you either use a hyperlink to a program like Poll Daddy, um, where you can evaluate your learners with multiple choice questions or true false questions, or you're gonna have to have some form of a flipped classroom that you're using your learning management system for. Um, super easy to use. Bummer, it's only on Apple products. Um, I'm sure you guys can see all of our Apple laptops for an Apple-based program, but some of our learners are on PCs, and so this obviously doesn't work for them. Next program I'm gonna bring up is Moodle. So Moodle is probably the one that I have the least amount of experience with, um, but I've heard from several people that once you learn how to use Moodle, it's not that bad. If you have a little bit of a coding background, it's gonna be super simple, and this will probably be no big deal for you to use. Moodle is completely free, which is always a bonus. Everybody loves it when something's free. Um, and then if you wanna do any add-ons, you can just pay a little bit more for the add-ons. So they do have additional bonus features. They're just gonna cost you a little bit. Moodle is great for housing your learner responsible content and also for your evaluation. 
um, Blackboard and Canvas, which will be the next ones I'm going to talk about, um, are major university type learner man learning management systems. So if you're part of a big university system, you might have access to this already, and it may only cost your program, you know, anywhere from ten to fifty dollars per additional learner to add on another course. So it's always something to talk to your big university or your school of medicine about. Blackboard and Canvas are both um, pretty easy to learn to set up. However, I personally think from the learner side, they're a little bit more difficult. Um, things aren't quite as linear. There's a lot of different ways that you can like move things around, and it gets kind of confusing to me. They both have built-in ways to evaluate your learners. Again, on both of them, you can have multiple choice question quizzes. You can have short answer type quiz quizzes. Um, Blackboard has a really good discussion format that you can use. Canvas doesn't really have a great discussion format. So they're okay. They're not my total favorite, but they're available to you usually through a university system. The downside is you're probably going to have to pay for them, and a lot of residency programs don't have that additional cash flow to pay for these. Which brings me to my last learning management system, and this is my personal favorite. Um, they don't pay me anything, although at the rate at which I promote them, they probably should. Um, but Schoology. Schoology is a free online learning management system available on all platforms. You can download it as an app onto your iPads. You can download it as an app onto your phone. Um, Android, Mac, doesn't matter. It's also available through the web. Schoology is currently funded by grants through the government. It's been around for about five to six years now, and it's what we use at our program for our learning management system. One of the things that I love about Schoology is how easy the interface is on both the instructor side and on the learner side. It's drag and drop, you know, it's click and upload. It's very, very simple. One of the other things I love about it is that it has a built-in evaluation method in the form of quizzes. You can have multiple choice questions, you can have true false questions, you can have short answer, fill in the blank, ordering, matching, all kinds of options. The thing I love about the quizzes is that you can upload all of your questions into a question bank which means they're saved for later use, and you can pull them out of that question bank into another quiz if you want to. So really simple. It's got a great um, message board feature. So if you wanted to just have a discussion with your learners and require that they answer something on the message board twice, you could easily do that. Very simple to set up. It um, has an unlimited amount of uh, housing and uploading. So I have probably five or six courses now on Schoology. We have our main um, residency asynchronous curriculum. We have a radiology, EMS, and toxicology curriculum. And I have uploaded probably several hundred gigabytes of videos and old lectures that we have. I've created probably over a thousand quiz questions. And it hasn't told me I can't keep going. So I personally think that's kind of awesome. The other thing I love about Schoology is that you have to have an access code to get in which means that anything that you put up there is only available to your learners. Um, you can open it up if you want to and make it available to the world, but you can also keep it closed and only available to your learners, which I think is really awesome. It tracks attendance, so it'll tell you when they last logged in, how many times they've logged in, and then you can export all of your quiz functions to an Excel spreadsheet if you want to to see how your learners are doing. So Schoology gets my uh, formal seal of approval. I think it's pretty awesome. It's free, which is great. And like I said, presently they haven't told me I can't keep uploading stuff and I'm uh, taking up a lot of room up there. So I've created a Schoology for this little course here. It has access to all of our uh, lectures, all of our PowerPoints and everything. It's got a couple additional handouts and then some resource slides as well. Um, so if you guys want to take a quick picture, that's the access code. You just go to Schoology, you create an account, and then you join our classroom, you join our um, class with this access code down here and then that'll let you guys all in. And then on my next slide, this is basically just a comparison of all of the different learning management systems. Like I said, iTunes U, great because it's free, but super simple, it doesn't have an evaluation method. Moodle, Blackboard, and Canvas are all um, pretty awesome. Moodle's free, Blackboard and Canvas do have costs associated to them. All of them are fully integrated. They take a little bit more energy to learn. And then Schoology at the bottom there, like I said, free, super easy to learn, completely fully integrated. So you've got a learning management system now, and you are going to completely implement things. Um, how else can you implement this? How else can you use an asynchronous curriculum? 
Um, one of my favorite ways is with flipping the classroom. We talked a little bit about this with TBLs. Um, so your traditional classroom, you teach your learners, you send them home, they do homework at home. But you're not there to help them out when they have those higher questions when they're working at home. So flipping the classroom, learning management systems work great for this. You can give them their learner responsible content on there, they can review it on their own, and by the time they get into the classroom, you're there to help them with those higher level questions. You're there to kind of push their knowledge a little bit further. I know there was a question earlier about um, how could you make TBLs a little less uh, wasteful and use a little bit less paper. You could actually put all of your TBL information up on a um, Schoology type program or a learning management system if you wanted to. You could have your learner responsible content up there. You could create the quiz and label it as the IRAT and have them do it by themselves and not give them feedback. So not have the answers pop up. You could create a second quiz that's your GRAT that does have the answers pop up when they do it. And then you could create your group application exercise as either a short answer set of questions or as a discussion board. Um, and so you could, you could make an entire TBL that's completely housed on the learning management system and not have any paper involved if you didn't want to. Um, so that is a quick and dirty of asynchronous curriculum, individualized interactive curriculum, and distance learning. There we go. All right, guys, just one last chance. I'm going to throw this up here. Um, I highly recommend you go on here because the next thing we're going to do is what we call slide off. Um, so I don't know how many of you guys have looked at different slide designs. Slide design, obviously, doing good lectures is really important. The slide design is part of that. And I've always struggled with how to do that. And then you read books like Schoology, which are great, but they're geared toward business. Like, this does not help me do a case report in the residency classroom. Like, this is not useful. So we are doing kind of six different things that you guys would need to do for med student learners or resident learners. So case reports, um, statistics, things like that, and different ways, three different ways you can present that same information so you guys have some ideas. So the, having school is going to be really important because we're not going to have time to like break down exactly how these slides are made for you guys. But the keynote and the PowerPoint will both be up on that Schoology so you guys can just access it up, access it up there, download it, and pull apart the slides, make them your own, see how they're made, okay?